right, you guys, we are back with Behind the Bikini, episode number 40. We like those big round numbers. Before. <laughs> I can't Knocked laugh. my computer over. <laughs> right, we're getting all excited. She's knocking her technology over. I'm coughing. <laughs> <laughs> like you can see when, like when you're, you know, you're in prep and you start seeing all like the veins. Like as soon as I started to cough, all my veins in my forehead started popping. I'm like, ah, oh my God, you're, no, just, stop. you're just getting lean already. What are you talking about? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Somehow, after this past week, which we'll talk about. But first, like, subscribe, comment, all the fun things. Hit the buttons wherever they are. I don't know what, what you're watching on. So they could be over there. They could be down there. They could be up there. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? So anyway. Um, so yeah. So before we get into today's topic, which we're going to talk about being where your feet are and kind of enjoying the process and understanding, you know, there's a, there is a process and, a, and a, a strategy to all of this and all of that. How are you doing? How have you been? How's your how, like? We didn't really talk much last week because we had the uh, had um, Addy on and all of that and Drew. So how, how's your prep going along? Prep's going good. Um, yeah, I, I think we're down like eight pounds at this point from the start okay. of. Yeah, so things are moving right along. Definitely visually a lot tighter. You guys can definitely tell in my starting to tell in my face. Okay. People yeah. are already starting to make comments. So yeah, I mean everything's really really good so far. This is like the low. <laughs> cardio has been for this long. I'm still only at 30 minutes daily and then two hit sessions a week. And um, we just increased my training from five days a week to six days a week. And my body's yeah. paying for it right now though. So just trying to manage that fatigue. And then uh, something really exciting is I finally found a body work person. In oh, nice. Myself. Finally. Um, she is absolutely incredible. Um, she's an IFB pro and just, um, she's a, a doctor of physical therapy and then okay. just, so she has the competing background and the manual background and she's been awesome. So I saw her the last two weeks and she's, uh, she literally, I was on the table on Tuesday and she was like, your body just loves body work. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I cannot go without body work as long as I have. So I'm just kind of catching up from the last six months of not getting it as much as I usually am. So Everything's great. I feel really good. Um, this was really the first last two weeks was the, really the first time I'm like feeling in prep, you know, the leg, the leg fatigue and just feeling a little more um, fatigue in general, but really I can't complain. So yeah, good. How about you? Um, <laughs> it's been a, been, a, been a hell of a week. Um, actually, before we j d dive into that. So it's funny because um, I was at New York Pro and met, I think her name is, I think her name is Karen. I think she's a big time bodywork person to everybody in Vegas. I believe. Vegas, yeah. yeah. And um, it's funny because I just had we just had a conversation with her after the show um, Saturday night or whatever. She's talking, like, yeah, I flew in to work on all the guys, and you know, I've been doing this forever, and blah 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 blah. And I was like, and it was funny because I was doing cardio yesterday, and I had I was watching YouTube on cardio and watching Nick Walker's um, vlog and everything from New York. I was like, oh, there she is. I was like, she came in to work on Nick. I was like, okay. I was like, everything's making sense now. It's all connecting. Got it. Like literally, her spot is it's right next to uh, Powerhouse Vegas. Okay. So, okay. Like, they're yeah, I'm like, okay, everything is making sense. I'm like, all right, it all connects. I'm like, interesting. It's it's crazy. Like people don't realize how important that is. Like, I've got a handful of new clients, and you know, when I first have them send me photos, um, the first thing I look at is their is their structure and their physique, and if they've got impingements and stuff like that. And I'm just like, you've got some imbalances. You're crunched up on one side. You know, your scapula is sticking out. Whatever. You know. And most of the time, the, the the response is, I don't stretch, I don't do ability work, I don't do body work, I don't do any of that stuff. And it makes a huge, huge difference. Such a huge difference. I'm guilty of not doing it the last couple of weeks. I've just gotten busy um, and I need to get back. Um, I've been uh, I've been doing it myself, but I haven't gone in for body work the last few weeks. Um, I was also talking to Yulia yesterday. Have you ever done lymphatic massage stuff? Yeah, so this woman that I see now and my guy, Matt, they both do lymphatic. Okay. Um, right before the Olympia. Like Matt, I always have Matt out and well, he's always in Vegas working on everyone. And then I have him come to my room the first two nights before the Olympia. And it's always lymphatic drainage, like just trying to get everything out as much as possible. And it's an interesting sensation. It literally just kind of feels like this. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. It sharpens up those tie-ins and brings out the delts. It's amazing. It's awesome. I'm I know. Curious. Yeah. yeah. I've done it. I did it once when I was in, but I just went to like this random place when I was in New York for New York Pro last year because I couldn't go to the bathroom. So I was like, I, I, you know, Jamie's like, you can go get a lymphatic massage here a couple of days out. You know, we don't want to do anything too crazy where it's going to, you know, bruise you and stuff like that. So I'm curious if I should, we're going to get into my story of this of what happened this week, but I'm curious if I should like incorporate that more, more often, that kind of thing. Um, just as a preventative measure, because uh, I had a, 
had a rough week. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's funny because we talk out here all the time about like, you know, we're talking about weights and stuff like that as we're prepping and things like that. And like my weight's not been dropping and I've had digestive issues ever since Pittsburgh. Um, and I, I look back at my, my check-ins with Jamie and I'm like, every week I'm saying my, my, dig my digestion sucks. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I don't really know. I thought maybe it was the peanut butter. I talked about this last week. I thought maybe it was the peanut butter that did it, blah, blah, blah. So I'm thinking about it back Pittsburgh. I always have issues when I go to shows, A. I always have issues. So it's really hard for me to stay regular when I'm at a show. So after Pittsburgh, I went to my parents' house. So my parents don't have like the normal foods that I usually eat. So I found myself eating a lot more like protein supplement stuff, like, you know, bars and things like that, that I don't typically eat. And I still wasn't, my digestion was still a mess and I wasn't regular and all that kind of stuff. And then I got to New York pro and again, couldn't go to the bathroom at all. And I'm just like, oh my God, this is terrible. So I get home from New York pro and finally stuff starts moving. Right. And I'm like, oh, awesome. But at the same time, it wasn't, I didn't feel normal still, you know, I still felt like things were a little off and, um, that's when I started getting this head cold. And I was like, okay, great. So then I got to go on antibiotics, which stock you up even more. And I'm just like, oh my God, like I, I got to the point. So the last time I was able to go to the bathroom was Thursday last week. And I went through the whole weekend unable to go. And I was at the point where, so Friday I started getting lower back pain because it was of the pressure. And I knew that that's like me getting backed up. You know, I, I felt that before. I know I've got GI issues. I understand that that's what that is. It kept getting worse and worse and worse. By the time Sunday night rolled around, I was in so much pain. I looked like I was six months pregnant. I was in so much pain. I couldn't move. Like I was, I was, I was yelling for Dan. I was like, I can't, I like, I physically can't push myself out of bed right now because it hurts so bad. He's like, we need to go to the, the hospital. I was like, all they're going to do is give me laxatives and tell me to go poop, but that's what they're going to do. <laughs> so I was like, but at the same time, I was like, I was worried that maybe I was obstructed or something like that. Like something was actually blocking me More at that serious. point. Yeah. So I was like, you know, it's, it's not a bad idea to go and just find out, you know? And so I went and um, they did a bunch of scans and, and, you know, x-rays of my chest and all sorts of stuff and everything. And essentially I was blocked up in my, um, my transverse colon, which the doctor said, like, that's really weird because like, that's the, that's the top part right here. And, um, it's usually when you see blockage, it's, it's, this it's the lower part of your, of your colon. So he's like, it's really odd. He's like, is your diet changed at all? And I, in my head, I was like, no, my diet's not changed. I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm normal. We have my macros every day. And then he, like, he was a bodybuilding person too. Like he'd been to the Olympia and stuff. So he understood all of this stuff. He's like, you probably stay really strict on your macros or everything. I was like, yeah, I do. So I'm like, I don't know what the problem is. And then I started thinking about all this stuff since Pittsburgh. And I was like, oh, oh, wait. Okay. So my diet has changed a little bit. So I was like, it, he's like, there's nothing we can really do right now. He's like, you know, we're just going to give you some, again, meds, laxatives. That's what we're going to do. Like it doesn't need surgery. It doesn't need anything, those kinds of things. He's like, you're my, my actual sickness isn't like they tested me for pneumonia and all that stuff. And it was nothing. It's just a head cold. They're like, what we think what's happening is because you've got the cough in the chest, you've got the, the, the congestion, you've got all of this blockage right here. He's like, it's all pressing onto your, your diaphragm, which is radiating pain. And that's where you're getting it all from. And I was like, oh, and then I'm like, oh, this is why I'm not dropping weight. <laughs> Cause he was like, he's like, you have so much waste backed up inside of you right now. It's crazy. Is what he said to me. And I was like, no, oh, cool. Great. Cool story. <laughs> So can we get it moving? Or? I know. So literally they just gave me laxatives and he maybe gave me a prescription for cough medicine and that was it. And he's like, you just, he's like, it's just gonna, it just is what it is. So I didn't actually go until Monday afternoon. So that was still four days. Friday, yeah. Friday, Saturday, Saturday Sunday, Monday. Monday. And four you were days. already uncomfortable and on top. Yeah. And it, oh God. Yeah. So and he told me at the, at the doctors too, he was like, you know, he's like, you can go train. He's like, you're not contagious. You know, training actually is probably not a bad thing because you can the do movement. stuff movement. Mm -hmm. Like that's the only time I was able to go like before, you know, but, uh, so, but I, he's like, but he's like, that being said, he's like, you'd probably be better off just taking a rest day to like Monday. I was like, okay, so I'll rest. So I was doing great. Like I was getting all my steps in, all my cardio, like we bumped up. Um, I had Jamie actually give me another day of training because I was having a hard time with only four days of training. So she gave me a fifth one where um, it's like a metabolic circuit for, you know, upper body, lower body, just keep me moving. So it's more like cardio, but it's still weights, um, which I didn't do this week because of being in the hospital. So I was like, all right, well, okay, I'll take a rest day. So I was doing great until until Monday. And then, um, 
and then and my Monday macros were all off. Like I was texting you, I did get dragon fruit, but I didn't get the yellow kind. I couldn't find the yellow kind, so it did not. It's got to be yellow. It's gotta I know. Be yellow. Couldn't find. I figured. I figured at the very least, the the regular dragon fruit would have fiber in it, which could help. You know what I mean? So I figured I'd yeah. do that anyway. And it was very good. I enjoyed it, but it did not make me go it's to the that. bathroom. Yeah. yeah, it did not make me go to the bathroom. So I told Jamie, I was like, my entire Monday is like all carbs and fat. It's like no protein. So I'm just trying to get stuff moving. Yeah. And uh, it just is what it is. So, um, so once stuff started moving, now I feel pretty decent. Um, you know, I got back to training on Tuesday, um, trained yesterday. You know, I'm going to do the same thing today. Got my cardio in, got my steps in, got all the things in that I'm supposed to get in. I actually dropped weight this week from last week. Um, so I, I, I'm moving regularly. I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic because I'm afraid that, you know, sometimes when you take laxatives, it makes it worse later down, right. down the road. So I'm, I'm concerned about that. So I'm just kind of staying on the protocol right now and just trying to hopefully it's going to just level back out because you ruin your gut bacteria when you do all that, you know. So I'm, I'm concerned about that. I'm just trying to, again, keep a lot of like yogurt and things like that in my diet so that that way it's building that good bacteria back up again. So that's, so that's for me. I, um, I also am a shy bathroom person. So like yeah. when I'm on the road for a really long time, like it's yeah. very hard to go. Yeah. Um, the Revive GI Shake. So it's their GI plus fiber and oh my gosh now i'm blinking gi plus fiber and something else um that shake like i'll do that then i'll go down for like my cardio i gotta okay. go like okay after cardio and it's not like laxative go it's just right. like oh it's cleaning me out from yesterday okay. so that's really good when and i usually do that when i'm really deep in season even when okay. i'm traveling but usually when i'm deep in season i'm traveling every weekend and then just like magnesium you know magnesium's yeah. really good do morning and well that's because that's something else i did too is i did the iv therapy so right. i reached out so i reached out to jamie and i was like you know what can i do to get rid of this congestion and head cold and maybe this get stuff moving and they put magnesium into the iv as well and still that didn't make me move either so i was like jesus Christ. yeah well at that point you're so yeah. backed up yeah. yeah and it was like it was funny because i got a few people that messaged me they were like did the iv therapy send you to the hospital i was like no it actually helped yeah i was like it actually did help but it just I, i'm like i was so far gone at that point with the, the bathroom issue i was like there's just no there's just no saving it you know no that iv therapy like usually when i'm getting sick and i get someone in my house to do that i'm better yeah. like like yeah. hours after yeah. if yep. so I truly, I truly love that IV therapy. It's well, my, and my congestion and cough were, were pretty good the following day. I'm still congested. I'm still, this is going to just linger. It's just one of those things that lingers for, you know, a week or two, that kind of thing. But the actual sickness feeling is gone. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's going it's around just, again. Yeah. <laughs> As, as usual, you know, anytime yeah. you have a change of seasons, you know, and then, and then it's just, you know, immune system in general, like traveling for two weeks was not the best idea in the world. You know what I mean? Right. So right. being around, being around people at these shows all the time, you know, if you remember back in, um, back in 2020 with the whole COVID situation, like everybody got COVID at the Olympia, like everybody yep. got it. It was crazy. And even the year after that, the one that was in back in Vegas. So that the year where it was in, yep. The year when it was in Orlando, everybody got it. The year when it was in Vegas, everybody 2022. got it. 2022. Yeah. 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 It's like, yeah. I woke up the morning at the Olympia. I went to bed 116.8 and I woke up 114 and I felt awful oh all night God. wedding all night long but i didn't know if it was the carbs if it yeah. was yeah and i woke up i was 114 i'm like we're we're fucked yeah <laughs> we're too flat there's no coming back there's no coming when you drop you know that's close to three pounds overnight pounds no overnight yeah, yeah and you feel like shit, but then you go backstage and everyone was sick and we're all just like with our makeup like we're gonna do this. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, that's the worst. Professional athletes. You just gotta do what you gotta do. And you people, gotta do what you gotta yeah, do. people in the audience don't know any different. They're like, "Oh, she looks gorgeous." <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm fighting for my life right now. But exactly. cool. Exactly. <laughs> I yeah. saw that. Um, I saw. Oh, I, I don't remember exactly the the whole situation, but I saw Sierra post about um, she injured herself going into Optum Classic last week. I don't know if you saw her post. No, I didn't. It was, she said it was Tuesday, I think, of peak week. She injured her back. And um, I think she has back issues too. Yeah, or... I, I think you're right. I think you're yeah. right. Okay. And, um, and then, like, she, she she put it all in the post. I think it was, she said Thursday night. She woke up in the middle of the night, like, in the most excruciating pain of her life. And she just wasn't sure if she's going to be able to go through it. And then um, the same thing happened on Friday, too. 
so it's it's crazy because like I you know I did the review of the show last night on, on live and you can see in her physique how like stressed the physique was you know what I mean and it's crazy like that that can happen the week of the show the week can of you the imagine show. you're in that much pain two yeah. days out from a show that you know you have to arch and hike and yeah. hold, like that mental stress and tax Ugh. and this is one of the reasons why you shouldn't be doing crazy food the night before the show and stuff too I had this happen to me with a coach this is years ago. He, he had me have a burger and fries and stuff before the show. And I was in, that was the night before, I was in so much pain. I was literally on the floor, laying on the floor in my hotel room because I, I was I was done. Like my stomach hurt so bad. There was nothing I could do. It was. Yeah, I have a, I have a really tough time with that one. Like I get, I get, I get it. Like I get looking at your client and they're so flat and you're like. What do we do? Yeah. And I get it. But like, I don't know if I could do it. Like, yeah. I feel like I would just still try to push with Whole Foods. I haven't had that situation yet. I don't yeah. know what when I do, but yeah. just, because more than likely, that's going to happen. You're going right. to have the after you're going to have, you're gonna have that something kind wrong. of food and grease. Yeah. Yep. I just and then is the client going to be more upset with you about being fly? Right. So to get on stage because they don't feel good, you know? I just had this conversation with one of my clients yesterday. She's in peak week now. And I told her, I said, we're going to keep everything steady the whole week. I'm like, we're just, we're just going like this. I was like, cause if I go up or down or anything with you, I said for a 5% chance of being better, we've got a 50% chance of being worse. You right. Know? right. If, if those gambles, those odds are not, those are not good odds. I just want to, I just want to go like this. I just want to go like this, do stuff that we know that's going to work for you, all that kind of stuff. And just, just send it. Yeah. <laughs> coast in coast into the into the, 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 the runway you know what I mean like yeah like if I did it it would have to be like towards the end of someone's season like we're literally just trying to try everything and make yeah. sure you know peaking strategies like I don't know it have to be the perfect well situation. you know when we're talking about people like Amy and like Ashley and stuff who have qualified or just trying to find their look those are people that you play with stuff absolutely you know? yeah because like Amy coming out with the straight hair yeah and yeah yeah because they may love it yeah they may love it they may hate it but it doesn't matter you know what i mean like at least you tried and then you know (laughs) what's the worst that happens someone comments on your look and says they don't like it okay cool right yeah we just tried to we just tried something just to see you know and like there's nothing wrong with that i think that that's actually a good thing to do you know um we were just talking about this before we logged on here it's like trying stuff out before you go to the big dance you know like if you're if your goal is to go to nationals and you know, win a pro card or something like that, try your stuff out first at the local level, get your feedback and then apply it when you go, when you go up to the national level, you know, that that's what that's for. That's what it's built for, you know, yeah, especially if your art is not your time to test something. No, <laughs> I'm absolutely a, not. Applying what you have tested and showing up with what you thought was your best from the test trials. That's right. That's right. Yep. Yeah. So <laughs> it's just, it's crazy to me how many people will just kind of say, okay, let's just throw this shit out there and see what sticks, you know, for no good reason. Like, all right. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I, most of us, I would say most of us in this in this industry, we ha- have GI issues. I would say most of us do, like a, like a good majority. So it's like, why would you why would you even why would you even do that? Like, I don't understand. It doesn't make sense to me. I think that's where the brain or the emotional brain takes over, like the logical brain. It's like, oh, a burger. I can have a yeah. burger. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I don't really care because I want it. You know. Yeah. You just go into that emotional side of things. Yeah. Right? I know Amy would never throw a burger. <laughs> one of us like she she's very clear like i don't i don't want to do that so no she's I'm, like add another 100 gram, grams of carbs you're gonna add another shake of salt you know yeah. that's it yeah. she's like we're done we're done yeah. that's it no more yep keep yeah. keep it conservative you can always push more if you need to the next show or whatever yeah. i do think it, a lot of it comes from old school bodybuilding methods too because like bodybuilders push a shit ton of food you know what i mean mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we're not them you know, we're not, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not 250 pounds on stage. Waking up in the middle of the night every two hours to feed. No. Right. Yeah. 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 The, the men's bodybuilders the night before a show, it is a job. They are yep. eating, they're waking up in the middle of the night. I mean, it is wild. Yep. Yep. And just, you know, just simple things like, you know, them sleeping again, I was watching the Nick Walker thing and he was saying what made him different between prejudging and finals at New York was he just went back to the room and he slept. You know, let the cortisol Stressed. release. You know, just let it go. Yeah. And boom. It worked. Yeah. Yeah. That was- but but imagine like the pressure of, you know, going yeah. back into 
your title. This is his first time out when he couldn't do the Olympia last yep. year from his injury. So yeah, you had a lot on the line. So Absolutely. imagine acts, you know, the night before the show, plus just what you have to do for the show, the yep. eating. Like so yeah, I, I could totally see that. And I was just yep. having a conversation with a client a couple times this week. It's been a week with clients um, <laughs> about the underestimation of, of sleep and water. In a, in a fat loss phase, like there's, it's, those are two of the most underrated things that you can do. People are so like, what can I take? What can I do more of? And it's like, no, just focus on getting an adequate water and seven, eight hours of sleep. Yep. Two nights in Absolutely. a row and you will drop weight. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and that's, so you know, stresses. that's been me, that's been me this week. You know, I'm like, even so, more so like I've been drinking a lot of Gatorade because I just want to get my, my balance back and all that kind of stuff too. So it's like, all of a sudden I feel so much better just because I've got that electrolyte balance back. I'm like, Oh, that's salt. That's, that's, sodium. Yeah, yeah. That's what I needed. You know, I'm like, again, cause I'm, I'm on these laxatives and stuff. So it's like, I don't want to. It's pulling everything out of you. Yeah, I don't want to completely deplete my body. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I've been pounding Gatorade every day, which is like when I took my check-in photos and stuff this morning, I was like, damn, I actually look pretty good. I was like, I don't Dryer. You know, I know. I'm like, how do I look this good when I'm when I felt like shit for a week? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna deal Finally with it. Finally went to the bathroom and I know <laughs> looking tight. Well, it's it's so funny when you start thinking about stuff like that and you look back, like hindsight is always 2020. You know, when I was at the in Jamie's room in New York checking in with her, I kept looking at my video. I was like, why is my stomach so distended? Like it never looks like that. Like I'm why is my stomach so because I have so much fucking shit in there. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> makes sense. I'm like, oh, all right, got it. No, it's all it's all clicking. It's all making sense as to why this is happening. All right, at least there's a reason. Hey, and it's a reason that's 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 solvable, and it's not something that I have to go like get surgery on or something. That right. was my biggest. That was my biggest concern in the back of my head. I was afraid like my my colon was twisted or something like in there was wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, especially what just happened with Dan a few months ago. I know. Yeah. I know. That's what was in the back of my head. I'm just thinking, oh, God, please don't tell me I have like a hernia in there or something yeah. like something really like fucked up or whatever. You know what Serious. I mean? Serious. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Thank God. Thank I God. Know. Have you ever I'm done you're feeling better. I know. Have you ever done one of those scans? Like, so it's like, it's not a CAT scan, but it's like a, they, I don't know what exactly it is, but they, they put iodine in you in order to do the scan, scan and no, see I what's going on I was just talking inside. about this with someone else though. And it's weird because don't you feel the sensation? Yes. Like he's like, the guy told me, he's like, he's like, when you, this goes in, he's like, you're going to feel like you have, like you just peed your pants. You have to he's pee. Like, yeah. 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 Yep. He's like, you didn't. It's just, that's the feeling that you're going to, it's the weirdest thing. I actually felt it in the back of my, my, uh, top of my roof of my mouth first. Weird. I was like, Oh, what is that? Like, it's like everything got hot and warm back there. I was like, what is, what is going on? Gosh, I was like, just having this conversation with someone else who just got that done. And they yeah. were literally saying, yeah. oh, I've never got this done, but this is what everyone describes. Cause yeah. I used to run my physical therapy clinic. So obviously the patients would get it all the time. And they were like, have yes. you ever had that done? It's the yeah. worst sensation. It's I'm like, really is. no, <laughs> it really is. And I like, you know, and I have a really active, like overactive imagination. So I get really queasy with needles and things like that too. So you start feeling that and you're like, I'm like, thank God I'm laying down. Let's go I, I know. Cause I would have passed out. I don't hundred percent yeah. passed out. Like, yeah, I wasn't even sure if I was going to make it to the IV therapy, let alone what they're doing with all this stuff, you know? Yeah. I had Dan, when I was doing the IV therapy, I had Dan come down. I was like, I texted him. I was like, can you come down here and hold my hand, please? I was like, I, was like, no. I, was like no. I can't do this. It's needles. I'm not good with needles. Dude, uh, that's how I used to be before competing. Like, I never got my blood uh, draw. Like, doctors wanted my blood all the time. Like, fuck that. I'm not sure. No, I'm done. So when I started competing, they were like, you have to do this. So Drew yeah. used to have to drive me, and I used to have to lay down. It was this whole thing. Yes. And then a year later, I'm coming in, like, every four weeks oh, by myself, and the same phlebotomist was there. She's like, I'm so proud of you. Like, look at you. You're driving yourself. I'm like, yeah, I'm a whole adult. Thanks. I know, right? <laughs> it's so funny. I can remember, so when I was a kid, you know, they still have to take your blood when you're a kid and stuff. I can remember this, like, clear as day. They went to go take my blood, and I and they had five nurses hold me down because I didn't know how to have my blood drawn. My That's how mom, you know you're fucked. Yeah, my mom was so embarrassed. I still yeah. to this day remember that. Like, they had them on my, my holding my arms down, holding my feet down, like – just so they could stick the needle in my arm. Yeah, that's that's me. That's I'm and then it gets you get done. And as a kid, you're like, man, that wasn't that bad. But yeah. like now I'm embarrassed. So like I still yeah. have to 
is that bad? Yes. Where's my lollipop? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Where's my lollipop? I want my I want my sucker. <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. <laughs> oh, so the things, the things we do. And yeah, I was seriously. just like. And I was like, so the other part was I was like going to the, and I feel like I'm like, okay, I look like a fucking drug addict because I walk in and there, I've got the, the needle bark from my arm from the IV. And then I'm like, um, so I just had an IV done over here today. Can you do it over here now? Please? I, sw- I swear it's not the drugs. I swear. <laughs> I was dying. Thank God you had a like, cool doctor. Yes. Thank God you had a, I mean. No, he I was. Think, he was very cool. I think we talked about this we a did. couple of about the doctors and how, yeah, with yeah. bodybuilding, they're usually like, oh, well, whatever you have going on today, you broke your finger, it's right. bodybuilding. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he was actually really cool. Like, he was like, <laughs> excuse me, sorry again. You're good. Um, but uh, he was like, he wanted to see my pictures, my videos. He's like, I'm going to Google you. I'm like, I'm like, here, let me show you some of the stuff from Japan and all this kind of thing. It was so funny. That's awesome. Yeah, That's he was really like, cool, though. He was, he, I said, he's what, New Hampshire? I think he grew up in New Hampshire and like all the big guys were out, were out there at the gyms during that time frame and all that kind of stuff. And like, he's like, yeah, I've been to the Olympia. He's like, it's been it's probably 20 years since I've been to the Olympia. He's like, but I've been and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, cool. So it was, it was a good experience. It was, it was at least the ER was, ER was a good experience. Um, they gave me painkillers and I passed out and, um, Dan was out in the car, like waiting for me. He was at the, he was at the ER with me, but he was <laughs> like, I was just in the back, you know, I was like, cause he's, he's on his computer working, whatever, Yeah, we're like, you know, so this is like midnight, you know, <laughs> and like it was literally, it was quarter to 12 when I got, when I got done with the scans and they gave me a painkiller. Next thing I know, I wake up, it's two hours later. I was like, nobody had come check on me or nothing. And I'm just like. I look at the clock. I'm like, I've just been here for two hours. And like, they forgot to give me the call button back. So I'm sitting, laying there in the bed with these needles in my arms. And I'm looking around and I'm like, I, I'm like, hello? <laughs> like, Did someone come? I was like, can somebody, somebody help me? I was like, they forgot about me. They just forgot. Like, you just forgot I was in there. Cool. So then after that, how long were you re- like there until you were released? Gosh, I think I left. I'm like, I'm surprised Dan doesn't come in at this point, like looking for you. Like where well, the heck? He, I know. I, well, that's what I thought too in my head. I was like, I think, um, cause I called him at that point. I was like, I texted him. I was like, um, I was like, I fell asleep. I think I forgot about me and I don't have a call button. That's literally what I said to him. I don't have a call button to get anybody in here and they're not paying attention to me. And, um, he's like, he call, so he calls like, what's going on? I was like, I don't know. They gave me painkillers and I fell asleep. And I was like, and I don't know what's going on. They haven't come back since I did the scans. I don't know. They told me a half hour. It's been two hours. I don't know what's going on. And um, so, yeah, he was like, I'm just, he's like, I've just been in the car. I assumed they were working on you and you just fell asleep or whatever, but I didn't know what's going on. And uh, yeah, so he was just, he was just letting things happen. You know, he, he's very like, like once he gets in the zone on something, like he, he just doesn't pay attention. So he was like, he was just working on stuff the whole time. I think I got home by like four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. 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 It was fun times. It was fun times. So. Mm-hmm. Glad that's over. Hopefully, yeah, that's, you're good. Done. You're good for your done. So, with that said, prep is great. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, that was a big, long tangent of the prep updates, but it's been a couple of weeks. So, um, let's get into today's topic, which is to you know to be where your feet are. And we were talking about this um, quite a bit because, again, this is happening a lot with me, and I know you mentioned it's happening a lot with you too, like talking with our clients and stuff like that, and understanding that as a brand new competitor, you are a brand new competitor and you're not a pro. And um, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you you have to go through the process of getting there, like just like any other sport. I think people, because I don't know, I don't know what it is. It's like, it's almost like they, they think that because these girls are accessible, easily accessible, they're just normal people that they are, that they can get to that point easier. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know how to explain it exactly, but there's no, like, there's no process in a normal sport. Meaning if you're a football player, you know, you're going to go through peewee, you're going to go through high school, you're going to go through college to get to the NFL. You know what I mean? It's, it's a lifelong process to get there. And that's the assumption is that there was a lifelong process. Right. Exactly. With bodybuilding, it's more like bodybuilders, in by and large, it's not across the board, but by and large, a lot of us were athletes that, as kids and then needed something as adults to keep us competitive and keep us moving and keep us going after goals and things like that. So, so 
there's not like a like you have to you don't have to go through a collegiate league in order to get there or anything like that. So I think a lot of people look at like Instagram and just assume I can be on that stage tomorrow. You Correct. Know? Yes, the assumption of what it took to get there for whatever reason is not yeah. consistent. They right. just see their favorite athlete, and for whatever reason in their mind, to them at that point, it's very attainable in a short amount of time. Right. Yeah. People forget. Pe people don't forget. People don't realize how much it takes to actually get onto a bodybuilding stage, you know, and at any I, level, at any level, at any level. And I think I've realized this more and more doing consultations with, with people because people really think that they're on the right path and they, they're completely wrong. You know, um, I, I had a consult yesterday with a lady who she's in her late thirties and she wants to get on stage by the time she's in her forties. And she's telling me everything she's doing. She's on keto. She's doing nothing but cardio three times a week you know, doing spin classes, all this kind of stuff and everything. And I was like, you know, I said that that's keeping you, your weight under control. I said, but that is not the same thing as bodybuilding. You know, that's, the, and this is something I found too, because the reason I came back from retirement was because as I started to get into my late thirties, stuff doesn't sit where it's supposed to sit anymore. <laughs> you know, like I wasn't, I wasn't maintaining my muscle mass. I wasn't trying to build. I wasn't trying to keep myself tight and full. And I saw things sagging. I saw skin sagging. I saw, you know, I saw my, my legs going away. I saw my arms going away. Everything was going away because as you get older, I really believe that muscle is the fountain of youth. And if you're not doing those things to try to grow that muscle, you are just going backwards, you know? So that's why I got back into competing in general, because I was like, I want to look how I looked 10 years ago. You know what I mean? So I think that a lot of people just assume that the cardio bunny aspect and just these fad diets and things like that is what you have to do in order to get on stage, in order to be skinny on stage. I'm like, you're not skinny on stage. I mean, you're but to be fair, muscular. that's that's diet culture. Correct. Right? That's yeah, right. I mean, we're still battling this. That's you know? right. I, I, I always say, like, if I had unlimited funds, if I came into an unlimited amount of money, what I would tackle is the diet culture. Yes. And like, how do I get out so much more information about carbs and that yeah. they're not the devil they're not the devil. sodium and how it's not the devil and now everything is just a balance yeah and it's it's so hard especially for women that you were saying that you're consulting in those you know late 30s yeah they've been so ex, ex, um, exposed to that yes. for so long and now there's this new data this new era of diet yep. and they're getting that information so yeah. they're still stuck in that old thinking yep. and it's sad too because someone like this, you might get their lab work back and it's bad. Yeah. And they think they're doing everything right. That's right. That's right. And it's so hard to yeah. unprogram that and reteach that and gain that trust as a yeah. coach because we're dealing with all of the data and the inundation that they're getting all day long. Absolutely. And it's, it's, it's completely flipping everything on its head. And that's really, it's really a hard concept to grasp. Like when you've been told your whole life for 40 years that you're supposed to do it a certain way, and then somebody like me comes in and says, no, you're doing it wrong. That doesn't, yeah. that doesn't compute. No. Right. And they're not going to trust you. At no, first. absolutely not. That's, that's okay. Yeah. But I got to get a little bit of buy-in to show you a right. little bit how the ropes are now. Right. So, so they really think that just by depleting and starving themselves and things like that, they can get on stage and look like, you know, an Ashley Kaltwasser. You know what I mean? They really think sure. that that's the process. Sure. It's not the process. It's not the process at all. To look like the, the top girls in the sport, you have to put years into building that muscle. It doesn't happen overnight. No. It doesn't happen overnight. No. Uh, you know, and, and, I, it, I, and it happens too with years of the right dieting and training as that's well. That's right. Again, you're going back to this woman who's she's doing she's dieting, she's yep. exercising, yep. but it's yep. not the the efforts to match what she actually wants to look like in her goals. That's right. That's right. And she and it doesn't it's not her fault, but it's like it doesn't it doesn't make sense. Like right. and when and when I'm sitting there trying to explain it to her, that doesn't make sense, you know. Yeah. Um there's there's a big disconnect between what we know and what we see, right? Sure. And um, so anyway, so going into that, that's that's the first thing. And they just assume that they can jump on stage, you know, win a show, look look fantastic and things like that. And then they move up to the pro ranks um, and then they can go to the Olympia. And you know what I mean? Like that. Like, but that's not how it works. It, it's, it's very much a long term thing. And here's the other part that we wanted to really kind of drive home here as well is that 
being where your feet are means enjoying the process along the way. You know, one of the things I always tell girls too is like, listen, when you come up and work with me and things like that, like I want you to enjoy it. This is a hobby at the end of the day. You know, it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be something that enhances your life. It's supposed to be something that keeps you healthy, keeps you strong, keep, get, increases your longevity, all of those kinds of things. So while I have a specific method that I want to give you as far as your training, your diet and all this kind of stuff, I need your communication too, because I want you to enjoy it and stick to it. Yeah. You know, if you're not enjoying it, it's not going to do you any good. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you're, if you're lifelong, if your lifelong thing is you've been a runner your whole life and I tell you, you can't run anymore, you're going to hate it. You're yeah. going to hate it, mm -hmm. you know? So what I do want to do is I want to start reprogramming your brain, you know? <laughs> so if like, if you're running five days a week, I want to just take it down to three, you know? So then that way we can start building you a little bit with the muscle and start rewiring those, those endorphin channels and all those kinds of things. So you feel good about it when you're in the gym and then you know, once we're starting to do that, maybe we can take the running down to two days a week, you know, that kind of thing so that we can get you to the, the point that you want to be at. But that is a long process. You know, yeah. that takes a long time because you have to rework <laughs> your, not only your brain, but your body, your body and your brain at the same time, you know? Yeah. Um, and I don't know about you, but that's, that for me is probably the hardest thing when I bring on, um, you know, I, I work with a lot of master's athletes when I bring on a lot of older women because they just, they've just done it so long for this, the same way for so long. It's really hard for them to understand that we have to deprogram that. You yeah. Know? But isn't it funny though, too, that I noticed that, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over Correct. again, expecting a different result, but how often we get so absorbed with our own insanity, right? Yep. So at any point when you're considering hiring a coach, you in some sort of way, shape or form have accepted that what you're doing is not working and That's you're right. not what you want, right? That's right. And I find it's very interesting that when you deliver the plan to someone and it's completely different than what they were doing, yep. how shell shocked they are. They're like, yes. well, this is completely different to what I was doing. Yeah, exactly. Because what you were doing isn't working. It should be completely That's right. Different. But this is my own um, battle too, is it's just that, you know, that, that initial gut punch of, of it's almost um god what's the word i'm trying to say like a defense mechanism like well what i'm doing is working what are yeah. you talking about you know yeah. and it's like if you just take a step back and just give mm -hmm. this plan or this newness two weeks yeah. and if it doesn't work we could always go back to what you were doing yep. but isn't that interesting like how we that's the story we tell ourselves yep. you know and I, I see this all the time that when that plan comes and it's completely different they're so afraid of it it's they're so afraid to try something new, but it's hopefully to get a completely different result. That's right. Or I can't do this. Yeah, yeah you can. You can, can. You can do this. You can absolutely yeah. do this. You know, yeah. but I, I get a lot of I don't know about you, but I get a lot of kickback on macros, too, for people that don't know how to do them initially. And they just mm -hmm. feel like they're they just feel like they're failing. It's like, well, can't you just give me a, a meal plan? No, no, I can. T I can give you I can give you the structure. You know, I can tell you how to build this stuff, but the point is the reason why we tr want, it, want you doing macros is so that you can learn how to do this yourself yeah. and you can, you have control over this and you don't need me. Yeah. You don't need me to put this together for you. We want you to have autonomy so that you feel like you're in control, yeah. so that you feel like you can do this. You know, that's the, that's the beautiful part about it. But again, you got it. Like you said, you got it. You got to get out of that comfort zone, that initial shell shock. If I can't do this, this is too much. I have so many clients that say that to me. They're like, oh my gosh, the macros are so overwhelming and the yeah. calculation. And I'm like, listen, the first two or three weeks on plan, I'm not expecting perfection. Right. We just need to start practicing. And That's the right. more you do, you're going to be okay. And yep. I always say to clients, by week three, you're going to be a well-oiled machine and you're going to be so grateful for the macros yep. because then you don't have that handcuff. Yep. And wouldn't you know it, three, four weeks later, I always get the message, oh my gosh, Jordan, I love macros, mm -hmm. spring, and da-da-da. I was just talking to another client yesterday, newer client, just started with me, very busy. She's a, um, a chiropractor. She travels for chiropractic. And the pushback on everything was that she travels. And I'm like, listen, you're talking to the girl that travels 32 weekends out of the year. Like, yeah. it is difficult, but it's, yeah. it is manageable. Absolutely. And what she's handcuffed with is, is like the food. And she's a lifestyle client. I was like, can you go to Chipotle and order white rice, chicken and veggies? Yes. And then you just track it in your MyFitnessPal and you're still on plan. So like mm -hmm. don't get up and everything has to be from home because again, not a prep client, not a prep yeah. client. 
But like, yeah. it is so freeing when you look at it that way. And it's yeah. all in the lens that you start looking at different things. So like, for me, like I said, that's my kryptonite is the defense mechanism. So when I feel defensive about something changing in my plan, for example, when Drew and Jamie decided that they wanted me to go from five days a week to six days a week, my initial gut reaction was, you guys, <laughs> I did an extra day of rest. Are you kidding me? So <laughs> then, I, then I took a step back and I said, I need to be coachable yep. I need to be an athlete yep. right now. So I'm just going to try six days a week. And if it becomes too much for me, I'll speak up. And yep. what do you know, two weeks later, I'm still hanging on and we're still living and my glutes yep. look better. So it's yep. working, but it's that defense. You know, you just got to be coachable. This is the definition of being coachable. Yeah. And that's, that's me with cardio. Anytime, anytime Jamie bumps up my cardio, I'm like, no, mm -hmm. <laughs> I yeah. hate it. Yeah. I, get, I get so upset. I'm like, no, I don't want another five minutes. <laughs> yes. Five, another five minutes. Five right? minutes. I know. It's five minutes, but I, want, yeah. I don't want it. <laughs> it's that jump. We've talked about this from 30 to 40 and it's like, ah, uh, but anything over that or under that, yeah. it's fine. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. hundred percent. And that's where I'm at. I'm at 45 now. So I'm like, ah, whatever. It's like, once you get to a certain point, it's like, it is what it is now. It is what it is. You know? <laughs> but, um, Something else too, though, in addition to that, that I saw, especially over junior USA's weekend. So Drew and I had three bikini athletes there. He had two, I had one. Um, my one, I, I knew what her feedback was. She looked great. She was classy. Yeah. She needs more glutes. So we, we knew that, but Drew's other two, two completely different physiques. Nobody came home with a pro card. Um, one looks exactly like Laura Lee, like structure wise, glutes wise. She's beautiful. She's yeah. absolutely beautiful. And the other one is dense and full and beautiful shape. Two completely different physiques. Both will throw pro in a matter of time. One, the really, really dense one has been competing for years, just yeah. really knocking on that door of that pro card one spot away at one point, like still can't get it, still can't get it, still can't get it. Just like that relentless spirit. The other one that looks like Laura Lee, this was her first national show ever. Both walked away with third. Um, However, the emotion behind both of them when they left that show was completely different. Right. And you would think it was opposite. So the one that's been competing forever and mm -hmm. literally knocking on that door, I can't tell you how many national shows. I want to say in the area of 10, maybe more. Yeah. She was like, it's just not my day. We're just yeah. going to keep taking the feedback and we're going to keep showing up. And such a great attitude, mm -hmm. like such a good attitude. The other one, first time national competitor, distraught. Yeah. definitely thought she was walking home with a pro card and you know and, and I get it when you look that good I totally get it but where's the disconnect right like right. this one just she just gets it this is competing yeah. some days you show up and it's your best and, yep. or it's your best and sometimes you don't but you know what I'm still gonna keep showing up because Sandy keeps telling me just keep showing up like yep. that's a, that is the winning mindset right yep. And then for uh, the other athlete, you know, it's it's just about now her learning the sport that right. there's going to be a lot more losses than wins. Yeah. In, yeah. in the in in the sport of bodybuilding, we talk about this all the time. Even at the Olympia, every single person walks away with feedback. Yep. This is never a sport where you're going to walk away and the person's like, "You're perfect. You're done. You keep showing up every single time." Like, there's always going to be feedback and. I have had to develop very thick skin yeah. in this sport. I was a very sensitive kid. I did not accept criticism well, good or bad. Like it has really taught me that because it, again, you're going to lose a lot more than you win. And so the, if the second that you start really focusing on what you said, Sean, the journey, you're going to get a lot more fulfillment because I'm telling you right now, like the placings are fun and winning is great. And that's why we all do this. But those are the moments that are so small compared to yeah. the rest of it. Now, the girl that came in that you mentioned that, that came out distraught prior to that show, had she won everything else? She w did very well in all of her shows. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. And that's hard. Right. And especially for the girls that like they go to their first national show and they win their pro card right, yeah. right away. I have seen that they have the toughest time because yeah. then they go the pro league and they just need a little bit more muscle and they're, you know, getting into those second and third call outs. So it's almost like when you're crawling those national ranks and you're in those, those, for those top spots and climbing for that pro card, you have now start, you know, you were an amateur and you're here and you worked your way up to the top. Yep. And once you get that pro card, you're right back down to the bottom of the That's right. and you've got to keep working your way back up. But for those girls that it took them a, such a short time to earn that pro card, they haven't 
experience that resilience as an amateur, yep. but now they're experiencing that resilience as a pro. And I think that's harder yeah. than experiencing it as an amateur, because if you come in with the right mindset to the sport, you have in the back of your mind or should, this is going to take me some time. Yeah. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I'm going to, you know, so you're just, you're almost more ready for the losses. Yeah. Um, so again, the women that I think that, you know, have done five, 10 national shows when they finally get that pro card, number one, they just appreciate that so much more. Yeah. But number two, they're, they're ready for that resilience now when they're at the bottom of the barrel on the pro level. Yep. Well, I think also this can flip a different way too, because I'll, I'll use another example. Um, you know, some of these girls, when they get on stage, like you mentioned, your other client, they're, they're national level. They're always in that top call out. They can't break through the pro card, but they're always in that top call out over and over and over and over and over and over again. And then they get into the pro league finally. And they're like, well, why am I not just winning shows at this point? You know, like I, a girl that, that I worked with like that, she's like, I don't understand how she won the overall in, at nationals. And she was like, I don't understand how I just won the overall at nationals. And I go to the pro league and the girls that I beat at that overall lineup are now beating me. I don't get it. Yeah. You know, it's like, I don't, I don't understand. Yeah. yeah. But it's yeah. a different league at that point. You know, yes. a different yeah. day, it's a different show. Like the other thing with her too, is that I told her, I was like, you've never in the, in the pro league. I'm like, you have yet to nail your conditioning in the pro league. That's, that's a big thing. I said, there's, there's a reason why um, they're, they're beating you. You know what I mean? But, um, but it's a different league. You're standing, standing next to different people and every show is going to be different. There could be a show where you just kind of break through and you're like, Oh, I got this. That's what happened to me. I didn't place at all on the national level at all. I was like last to second left to last call outs every time I got on the national level stage until the day I won my pro card and won my class, like out of nowhere, you know what I mean? So to me, part of me is almost like, I kind of wish I had stayed in the NPC a little bit longer. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> to be perfectly honest, I was like, that. I wasn't ready for it. Like I was yeah. I, I, no, in no, no part of me at all that weekend went into that weekend thinking I was walking mentally. Out. Yeah. That you were there. Yeah. No, no, yeah. no one part of me. I have you to admit, know. when I heard my pro card, like I was excited, but I was also like mourning the NPC. Yeah. You know, because it's so fun. Like it is so fun in the NPC. And I found my, you know, the groove and the pro level. And so have you. But yeah, it's just like yeah. really enjoying where you're at. And like, and this is a sport too. Like you have to think, like, people, the judges are, are, talking about you and yes. the way you look like in your physique. And, you know, I get that mental upsetness of, you know, coming off stage and not getting that placing and taking it personally. Like mm -hmm. what did I do wrong? What right. could have I done better? Like what yep. did they not like about me? But more than likely it has nothing to do with those things. Like if you know that you pose your best, you followed your plan, your coach peaked you right. Like at the end of the day just wasn't your day and that's okay. Yes. Like take the loss, go cry backstage for a second, put yourself together. But then here's the important thing. If you're asking for a pro card, keep showing up like a pro. Yeah. Wipe your tears away, go up and go get your feedback yep. and then keep delivering and keep working on it. And the more you keep working on it, you're going to get better. And you Absolutely. are going to a pro card one day. You just have to keep, you know, that feedback and the comparison game too. You know, I think a lot of, you know, this has to do with the comparison game to pros or to other amateurs. You know, I used to do it too. You know, if I was getting ready for an NPC show, I would look up the hashtag and try to yep. find all the athletes and it never served me at yep. all ever yes. like never ever and i think too like that that's really a, a, a psychotic game that you have to learn to not play with yourself right. you literally just have to focus on you and in general we tend to be very type a people in the sport so we're very like we want to control everything mm -hmm. you, you can't control that part you, nope. you know what i mean you, you can't absolutely you, you're right <laughs> like and, and also, yeah please don't show up you look really yeah. good <laughs> <All right>. uh, <laughs> well and that, that's the, the part too that i have a hard time with is that like a lot of you know amateur clients look at pros and they want to be like the pro and they want to pose like the pro and they want to do you're not a pro yeah true yeah you know you're not there yet and that's okay you know, you're, you're okay to be where you are. You have a different set of standards that you have to adhere to. And we're talking about like posing routines and stuff like that. You don't want to pose like Laura Lee. That's not, that's not, that's not it. That's not it. Like she's a, she's a genetic anomaly. So her body looks different than everybody else. So she her posing is absolutely beautiful. Right. Exactly. Like, right. It's like, you can't, you can't pose like her. That's the first yeah. thing. I'm like, second thing is, is that you are in the NPC. you got to pose like an NPC competitor. Period. Yeah. You gotta look yeah, 20 like 20 seconds. Yeah, you gotta look like an NPC competitor. Sure. Period. You yeah, know? Yeah. 
And like, I hear that a lot, like, well, this person needs a better structure in order to do well. I'm like, yeah, once they get to the pro league, they need that. I'm like, what they need to do now in the MPC is they just need to show up in shape and just show their best, their best assets and they'll do well. That's all they yeah. do. That's a really great point too, because part of my feedback before I was going pro and similar to Drew's athlete, that's super, super dense. Yeah. And I told her this too, in between prejudging and finals, it's going to be very difficult for her to turn pro. Yeah. But once she turns pro, she's going to go right up top yeah. to the pro league because of the amount of density yeah. she's in compared to the other amateurs, because a lot of people are still so new to the sport and adding muscle. So what shows up that day is a little bit on the uh, lower muscle side yep. and she's just big, full, dense. Yep. And it's just not something that's, you know, being distributed on the national level at this current point. Right. But once she gets that pro card and it's her day, she's going to go very, very high up because the pros have that amount of muscle. That's so, right. and that was part of my feedback too when I was in the amateur. They're like, you're just really dense. Like yeah. you just got to mainstream everything and you just got to come and look in like the perfect conditioning, the perfect fullness, or else you're going to look like an outlier. Right. So yeah, you don't always want to look like a pro in the, in, in the amateur league. There's, there's definitely a fine difference. Is that the standard? Yes, absolutely. But it's not the look. That's right. The it's apples versus oranges. I had this issue with a client years ago. She looked like a pro and um, she wasn't. She was an NPC competitor and she, she her first show out ever, she won the true novice overall, the novice overall and the open overall. She just like won the whole show, right? The her whole show, show, yeah. Her first show. And then, so we said, okay, we're going to shut it down for a year, come back and do nationals next year. So she did a, a local level warm-up show for for that national show. And um, it's Junior USA's. And um, she went into it. It was a local natural show. She was a natural athlete, all that kind of stuff, but she was massively more muscular than the rest of the girls in that show. She didn't even win her class. Right. She came in second in her class. The girl that beat her is still not a pro today. The girl that beat her in that class won the overall, and then is still not a pro as, as of right now. She went into junior essays the following week, won her class, won second overall, won her pro card. Yeah. In there a you week. go. That's a great in a week. Week. That's it. Mic drop. That you're seeing. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, and it's like and everybody that we show pictures to, like we cut our heads off, we put it on message boards and stuff. This is back in the day. You know, cut the heads off, put her picture next to the girl that beat her in her class, and everybody said she she won. No, because she was the outlier in that class. Yes. She was more muscular than everybody else in that show. Everybody right. else in that show looked skinny and thin and all that. She did not look that way. She looked like Correct. a pro. Yeah. Outlier. Yeah. Being the outlier is not always a good thing. No, so you got to no. kind of fit the part, but stand out a little bit. It's yeah. such a, it, this, it and again, this is the frustration of our sport, but again, this is what makes it interesting mm -hmm. because who can nail it on the head? And that's what, yep. that's what all of us keep coming back for, right? Like yep. let's be all love to win, but also this wouldn't be fun if it was so easy, right? Yeah. Like, right. So that's the part of it that makes it so interesting. Yeah. And I'll also say about her, I think that that meteoric rise was actually a problem. Um, she never ended up making a pro debut. Aww. She never, she never ended up competing. She's I think, done. yeah, I, well, she tried, she tried to make a pro debut like twice, three times, something like that. She's never made it to the stage. And, okay. you know, I think what happened and I don't know for sure, but I think what happened is she got in her head and didn't want to like, almost like ruin the the fact that she rose so quickly you know sure like that, yeah that, that fear of success you know going right back to yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. And so that's I, that's tough too yeah I, I mean i have i have a lot of respect for people that are willing to just grind it out you know just grind it out 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 you know we see it a lot in the pro league maria cost is a great example always the bridesmaid never the bride she's kept grinding 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 so happy for her right yeah. and everybody loves seeing that you know everybody yeah. loves seeing somebody who doesn't give up and just keeps pushing and keeps going. It gets a little bit better every time. Just a little bit yeah. better every time. And that's the name of the game. Even when you're in the in the NPC, the name of the game is to get a little bit better every single time. Yes, ma'am. That's it. You know, if you're doing that, if you are constantly improving, you're going in the right direction. It may take you longer than the than the girl standing next to you to get to where you want to go. But that's part of the fun of it. Yep. And you if know? you keep showing up like she did, eventually you're going to get it. And yeah. how much sweeter was that for her? Like, right. that was it. Right. You knew that was her moment. Like, so happy for her. Yeah. Well, I know for me, too, I don't, you know, you had your journey on the national stage, too. Like I said, for me, I did a ton of national shows, and I, I did shitty national shows all the time. You know, um, local level shows, I'd crush it. I'd crush the local level shows 
all the time. So it's like this this inconsistency of always being in the top two, always in the in the bottom. bottom you know? yeah. And it's just like I, I, you know, it was so frustrating. I personally preferred going to nationals because I wanted to be challenged. Yeah. I felt like when I was at the local level, it wasn't a challenge. I'm like, I could just show up today and win this thing. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, I, yeah. I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I would rather, and that's how I am in the pro league too, because that's what people said all the whole time. Like, why don't, because I'm a natural athlete, natural pro card, all that kind of stuff. Why don't you go to a national, a natural league? I was like, cause I don't, I'm, that doesn't motivate me. Right. I was like, that doesn't push me to be better. I want to be, yeah. I don't care if, if they've got an advantage over me. I don't care. I want to be pushed. Yeah. Even if I come in last, I'm still being pushed to be better every time that I come onto that stage. And that goes back to liking the journey to get Correct. That. That's yeah. right. That's right. You know, and again, going back to, I'm like, I'm not going to sit here and compare myself to Olympians because I'm not an Olympian. I'm going to compare myself to the girls I'm getting on stage with, right, to today. Yeah. yeah. Compare. But, you know, stay stay in that league, stay in that For zone. Sure. Yeah. You know, that's where I want to be. This is where I want, this is where I want to push myself, you know, and even with me going into the master's level now, now that I'm going into, you know, over 40 and stuff like that too, I'm still going to enter the open because I still want to be pushed. You know, I still want, I don't care that these girls are 20 years younger than me. I still want them to push me. I want to be like, what is the point for me? I'm like, what is the point of doing all of this? <laughs> if you're not <laughs> better than you. Right. If Why am I going to put myself through all this bullshit? for just walking on stage and winning. Like, why am I going to do that? It's yeah. stupid. Like, I wouldn't do that. And I yeah. see that, you know, again, I'm a member of all these Facebook groups and stuff. And, you know, there's some girls in there. That's what they do. That's what they do. They just want to get on stage and have fun. And blah, blah, blah. That's cool. Like, if that's what your thing that's, is, you just want to have fun. Fine. Yeah, that's fine. Just be realistic. That's, that's yeah. not me. That's yeah. not me. If I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it to push me to be better every single time. Absolutely. Every single time. You know, and then also. Time like, out. Boom, I got to pee. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Can't hold it. <laughs> Interrupting our scheduled programming for just a moment here to introduce our brand new YouTube channel partners, Liquid Sunrays. If you know anything about me, you know that I've used Liquid Sunrays, nothing but Liquid Sunrays, my entire competitive career for 15 years. And we are so excited to welcome them as an official partner of our YouTube channel now. So if you've never checked them out, scan the QR code right here, or I will also put a link for their site down into the description box below. Get over there, check out their products and services, book them for your show, get their DIY stuff, get their competition skin prep. You'll want to use a skin prep even when you're not in competition prep. It's that fantastic. And let them know that I sent you. You can use code cuties15. And again, thank you so much for your belief in us and in our products and in our services. We believe in you just as much. So thank you so much for your support, Liquid Sunrays. And again, scan this QR code right here. Go check them out. Let Mama Rays know that Mama Cutie sent you. Um, so we're back. Um, we're back. I'm like, I forgot what I was going to say, but uh, what, were, what were we on? We were talking about comparison. We were talking about, oh, Showing oh, oh. up in the open for she to be yeah. there. Yeah. And, and staying, again, being where your feet are, like focusing on the show that you're actually in versus the one that's coming down the road. You know what I mean? Um, I have that happen with all of my clients. It's almost like during peak week, they all want to talk about the next thing. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We, it's, it's Wednesday. You're getting on stage on Saturday. Like let's focus, let's, on focus this on, show. let's focus on Saturday. Once we get through Saturday, we'll have a phone call and we'll decide what we're going to do from there. Right. Yes. Um, I had a first time competitor last week and I'm actually really, really proud of how she handled everything because she's gone through a lot. She's diabetic. She's, you know, she dropped 180 pounds over the course of uh, this whole process. Right. I took over her prep in the last two months. So it wasn't like I didn't have her from the start. You know, I just wanted to get her on stage, that kind of thing and, and help her get there and, and really finish the job. Yeah. Correct. Right. So, you know, she had in the back of her head that she wanted to compete again in, in October. Uh, once we got done with the show, I told her we're going to have a phone call, blah, 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 all that stuff. So she sent me a list of questions she wanted to go over um, on, on the call. And she said, can I really be competitive in October? And I just was honest with her. I said, listen, at the end of the day, I, I don't want to put you on stage in October. You know, I said, that means we've got to keep you in a deficit right now. <laughs> I was like, your, you know, your, your feedback was conditioning. We got to build you muscle, you know, all the kind of stuff. I was like, we can't do that by October. We just can't. I said, if, if I had my way, I said, we'd put you into an off season right now and see how your body responds. Maybe get you on stage this time next year, maybe a little bit longer. Just see how your body responds. I don't, I, if you get on stage in October, you're not going to do any better. No. And you're not going to be feeling okay. Yeah. And she was like, that's exactly what I was thinking. Good. 
So I was very, very proud of her in that, in that regard, because again, she didn't know the difference. She's a first time competitor. So she didn't, she realized through the course of the last two months that she wasn't doing things correctly. And we, we changed a lot of things for her. Um, and she's like, okay, I, I'm starting to understand this now. You know what I mean? She's playing and the long game. That's right. And she's like, at the end of the day, she's like, I'm competitive. She goes, I want to do well. She's like, and if that means I need to stay off stage, that means I have to stay, stay off stage. She's like, this is too much of a commitment financially, physically, mentally, emotionally, all those things to get on stage and look worse or look the same. I said, exactly. Bravo to her. Yeah. Now I, I so will proud. say this too. There's the opposite of this as well, where there's some people that just want to keep themselves in an off season forever because yeah. they never think they're big enough, right. lean enough and whatever that looks like or right. wherever that comes from, whether they're comparing themselves, to their you know, top pros or they have prep goggles themselves, yep. both are valid feelings, but yes. you know, again, at the amateur level, you can get, a, get away with a lot more. So like, I think sometimes yeah. too, the expectation for some athletes is that they, they can't show up until they're, perfect, perfect. but again, yes. back to the very original idea, you're never going to be perfect in the sport. That's okay. Yep. That's part of it. Yep. Um, so it's also too about really leaning on your coach. Like we're really big at, you know, with the body fusion and everything of health, number one, and like not putting our athlete on stage unless we truly feel like, you know, they're ready, healthy, mentally to be there. Yes. Um, but also not sidelining your side. Uh, lining yourself. You know, I have a right. client, she was in prep and then, you know, work got super busy. She pulled out of prep because of work. And then now she's in like this mini off season. And she, now she's like, well, now I don't know if I want to continue to prep because I feel like I'm not big enough. And she looks amazing. And it's like, yeah. just trust me, like yes. as your coach, like, I don't want to put you on off season longer than we have to either. Like the right. fun part is getting you up on stage and getting those placings right. and the show of uh, and the thrill of show weekend. But I also don't want to show up if we're not in shape or if we're not looking our best, yep. but also Keep you in the off season if you're ready and like right okay, you know so well, it, it's really about leaning into your coach and like if you trust them in their eye then you just you have to go all in and you know yeah. really, really immerse yourself in that and again your coach should know your ultimate goal like yes you know on what you're talking about like some girls just want to get up on stage and be in the sparkly bikini and get their photos and be with their family like cool then mm -hmm. that means you're gonna be on stage more as long yeah. as everything's working healthy right uh, for some people the pro card well great well then we're not going to continue to do all these small regional shows to go get overalls in first place if we're still too small to go to nationals you know right. so it's just lean into that feedback and that's where all of this just goes to number one identifying your why mm -hmm. why do you do that why do you mm -hmm. love to do that? and what is the ultimate goal and those behaviors should reflect that why yeah. and going back to you know what you were saying before as well leaning into your coach there's a reason why you hired us you know, there's yeah. a reason. I, again, I had a, I had a talk with one of my girls this week. I was like, listen, I was like, at the end of the day, just let me do my job, you know, just chill. Like, you don't, you don't have to think right now. That That's uh, the beautiful. I'm like, that's the beautiful part. You, you hired me for yeah. to do that. You hired me to do that for you right now. Yeah. When they're worrying, I'm like, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. You need to worry. That's right. I'm like, that's, what, I'm like, that's yeah. literally what you're paying me to do right now. Yeah. So, and that's why I don't chill. worry about me. I pay Jamie to worry about that's me. She exactly. That, that's exactly, that's exactly right. It's yes. like, you know, just chill. Yeah. If you've, if you picked a coach, if you've done your due diligence and you picked a coach that, you know, has your best interest at heart and wants to see you improve again, we can't, we can't promise you place things. We can't promise you pro cards. We can just promise you that we're going to do our best to get you better every time you get out on stage, you know, and if you, if you've done your due diligence, diligence and got somebody to do that for you, turn your brain off, turn your brain off and let us do it. You know, there's going to be another show. There's going to be a postmortem. We're going to go through everything. There's going to be changes made. There's going to be things that we're going to do better next time. But for right now, just let me do my job. Turn your brain off and enjoy it. Yeah. Enjoy yeah. the process. Enjoy the weekend. You've got family. You've got friends. you got whoever that's coming to be with you. You know, enjoy why you're doing this in the first place. Like yeah. you said, go back to go back to your why enjoy that part of it. You know, it's, it's, it's a big deal. Like we, we get so caught up in, you know, wanting to play well and wanting to be competitive and wanting to do this and wanting to, to do that and forgetting, like we're blessed to be able to do this in the first place. You know, yeah. that was a big thing for me when I was in Japan, I was like, I am so blessed to be here right now. Like, this is amazing that I get to yeah, get just to be able to move your body, yeah. you know, like when cardio is sucking in the morning, like, especially with, you know, Memorial day, just, yeah. you know, like, around the corner like I tell myself like 
I'm appreciative that I can do this and I can feel this pain right now because imagine if I was wheelchair bound or if I was missing a limb or, you know, like, Mm -hmm. and I know that's, you know, that's deep, but like, that's where I truly go to is like really trying to find the the gratefulness of this sport ability to do this and no one makes us do this. This is a choice. Right. And yeah, there are days that suck and that mentally it's exhausting and you're allowed to feel all that. But yep. the, but if you are hating your prep seven yep. out of seven days a week, it's probably not the process for you, you know, right. like short, you know. Right. Um, but I really try to, you know, take that time when I'm feeling that pain to, to yeah. take a deep breath and appreciate the pain. Think about, and you've met Deborah, who's come to uh, CCTS several times. Um, I always think about that situation. I don't know if you know the backstory on that, but um, she was supposed to come to CCTS. It was three years ago as just, an, you know, coming as an athlete. And um, I've been working with her since the beginning. You know, she's one of my sponsored athletes. So she won a pro card working with me, all that kind of stuff has placed top five in in pro figure, you know, really, really great athlete, all that kind of stuff. And um, that week leading into CCTS, we hadn't heard anything from her, which is weird. Like we, we do, you know, surveys and we get all their meal choices and all this kind of stuff. We hadn't gotten anything from her, which is really odd. She's always like the first person to respond to everything. So like even Dan said, it's like, did something happen between you and Deborah? I was like, no, I was like, but yeah, it's weird that we haven't heard anything from her. So finally we heard from her husband and she, that's when she got um, the GB, you know, uh, Galean bar. I can't pronounce it right. Um, Gure. Yeah. It's yeah. That hard GB. GB, Yeah. GB. Um, And she, uh, she went from being a top five figure pro to fighting for her life, you know, fighting for her life overnight, literally overnight, you know, and now she's in the process of working her way back to, you know, try to get back to the stage and think she wants to compete bikini. Um, She's made an incredible recovery and all of that too. But anytime I start like having a pity party, <laughs> I think about that and I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like, and if you don't know, like the doctors told her the reason why she survived because she was in a coma and all of this stuff. The reason why she survived is because of the muscle mass that she had on her body. Her body actually used the muscle that she had built in order to keep her alive. So bodybuilding actually saved her life, like legitimately saved her life while she was in that coma. So, you know, it's incredible. It's, it's just, and I'm, I can get emotional just sitting here thinking about it. <laughs> so she, and she's just amazing too. Like what a, what a testimony that she now yeah. to us, you know, yeah. and she, she's a speaker at CCTS. So those of you that come, you'll, you'll get to meet her, but yep. uh, yeah, like literally the definition of resiliency and like appreciating where you are. And I remember yeah. her this year and how emotional she got about like missing the gym and like yeah. taking granted every workout and yep. you know sucky moment you know through a prep and that's all she wanted after yep. that happened you know that's so right. yeah really our topic for today you know putting your be feet down where you're where you're you're at. yeah because it can be gone tomorrow it literally mm-hmm. can go that quick yeah that quick so i think that's a good place to end it yeah <laughs> as, your, as your dog's in the background squeaking <laughs> i got him a new i got him a cut co- yeah you're side eyeing me because you know i got him a couple new toys yesterday here so he's playing oh, with his lobster i love yeah. it i love it dog's ollie can you just wait like five minutes for that <laughs> thank you <laughs> you talk to him like you do the same thing <laughs> daddy's out of town out of town this week oh, so we've been okay having- okay We've been, oh God, now we got both of them here. Okay, cool. Yeah, at their attention. That's <laughs> so funny. Oh, yes. dogs, dogs are the best. We say that all the time. Like, you know, like I talk about our, our house. I said, Elvis, Elvis rules this house. That's the reason why he loves, like, he loves this land more than all of us do. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, you uh, bought the house for him, right? You bought the house for him, literally. My favorite shirt is, I work so my dog can have a better life. Yes. And every time absolutely. I wear it, people are like, oh my gosh. Uh-huh, 100%. <laughs> Yeah. 100%. <laughs> Which, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this on this podcast. I posted it in my stories and on my Facebook and stuff too. But we have baby foxes in our neighborhood, and I found I found their den. I found their den the other day. I don't know if you saw it on my stories. They're, Is it on your property? No, it's it's our neighbor. Yeah, oh, cool. it's our neighbor. So we have a neighbor that backs up their their backyard backs up to our backyard. So when I was driving on the road to come around the cul de sac to my driveway. I see the two baby foxes in their driveway. So they have a driveway and then they have like the, the drain pipe underneath the driveway. They're living underneath there. Cool. How many yeah. of them? Are there? Well, I saw two. I saw two okay. babies. I saw two babies. There's four all together. So I haven't seen all four babies. Well, there's got to um, be a mom and a dad. There's, there's, there's a mom and dad too. The mom and dad okay. were, ba- were babies last year. So the mom and dad were wow. babies last year. So they're, they're, they're the, the full grown now. 
So, yeah. And you have toads right now yes. in the yard. Yes, yes, we have frogs everywhere. Okay. So, you know, typically we sit out on our back porch, but we were having our back porch painted. So, oh, cool. so we were sitting out in the front yard for the, for a few days while that was being painted and dried and all that kind of fun stuff. And there's there's just a ton of freaking bullfrogs. I don't even know. Like, are they loud? Really loud. Yeah, it's like they talk to each other the whole time. They're really loud. I don't yeah. like, and they're big. They're like they're like this. They're they're big. They're big. They're big. They I can sit. Stay, they can stay outside. <laughs> I'm not. I'm like. I'm not gonna go sit and pick them up or anything. But I still think they're cool. Like. like oh. <laughs> I'm like my, my big bullfrogs. They come and they come and hop through the yard every night. And I'm like, you take your gummy cool. at night and you're like talking to them. You're like, oh, I know, I'm talking to the bullfrogs, right? <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm in like an like Alice in Wonderland kind of situation. <laughs> yep, for real. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yep, but they're, they're they're cool. Like it's it, it was just so funny. So we have a we have a little fountain in our front yard too. So we turn the fountain off because it's that's really loud. So when we turn the fountain off, we, all we hear is these bullfrogs just bullfrogs. like yelling, yelling at each other all night long. It's so funny. <laughs> Do you hear it like when you're trying to sleep, like when you're inside, or only when no? You're because I, I well, I have a fan that I play. Well, I. Like we either have a fan in the bedroom or I have my YouTube fan. So I so always it sounds have like a vortex in your room. Yes. That's how ours is too. Yeah. With fans going yes. Like, yes. Absolutely. I can't I can't vortex. sleep. I can't yes. sleep if it's if it's quiet. I can't sleep. I have to have yeah. I have to have background noise. So but mm -hmm. as soon as that goes on, it's like it's almost like a calming thing for me. It puts me to sleep. So Yeah, it's like a Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I love it. Well, um, let's wrap this up and then next week is DC Pro Am. Yes. So we are going to do an in-person podcast for DC Pro Am. Um, you're getting into town on Thursday. I live here. So I'm going to go see her at the hotel on Thursday. We're going to do it in person. I'll get it put out uh, either that night or that morning. Um, and then I'll be on the live stream all weekend. For yeah. The, the official the official live stream. Um, so it'll be, fun. it'll be a fun show. They, For those people that have never watched the live stream, we are on for pros and for amateurs. So we do the whole thing. Um, and we give critiques and all that kind of stuff. So for those of you that are that are competitors wanting to learn, it's a really good live stream to get because it's me and it's Leo. So Leo is a male coach. Um, he's also a judge. So uh, and the fun part about Leo is that his background, his parents were journalists. So he's really, really good at the commentary stuff. too. Mm. So good. we have really good uh, back and forth with that. Um, you know, his specialty obviously is the male divisions. My specialty is the female divisions. We know enough about each other's respective divisions to have good conversation about it. Um, but you know, we kind of have our, our, our expert opinions for our for our own divisions and stuff like that too. So it's a very very good live stream to purchase just to have, so that that you can reference back to it and you can see all of the things that we see on stage with these these competitors and all of that kind of stuff too. So not just and the pros, at DC they're going to have masters bikini, open bikini, pro bikini. So correct, really great live stream to watch for yep. work and obviously with Sean on there as well yep. and her back. Yep. And then the, what other pro division is, is Men, it? Men's physique. Oh, men's physique. Yep. Men's um, physique. So for, yes. Yeah, so men's physique as well for the pro divisions, but for yep. the ladies, listening, you know, like I said, master's bikini, open bikini and the pro bikini, like that's yep. a really great live yes. stream for homework, get feedback, things like Absolutely. that. It was a very competitive show last year. Yes. And it, it is every year. Um, let's see. I think Bill is, is head judge this year, Bill Sevilla. So, yeah, um, which is great going into, you know, the, the national shows coming up in the next few months. That's why a lot of people are doing it to get feedback going in and so they can make some changes and stuff going into the next, the next few sets of national shows coming up. So, Correct. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a really good show. So if you haven't purchased it, it's garyunit.com is where you can get the, get the live stream. So awesome. yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun week. It's going to be a fun yeah. week. Looking forward so, to seeing you. Yeah, I know. We haven't seen each other in a while. It's what was, cause you weren't at the Arnold. Soon. Since you were here for uh, Coach's Weekend. Oh, that's right. Oh, my God. February. Jeez. Yeah. Wow. Wild. Wow. I know. I know. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see you in a week. Yay. Yes. <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully my, my transverse colon will be unblocked. We'll be, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a week from now. I sure hope so. I sure hope so. I think we're good. I think we're good. Yeah. Cross your yep. fingers and your toes, yep. <laughs> and, and your tongue or whatever. <laughs> yeah, right. Whatever you can, whatever you can cross. Whatever you can cross. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much for uh, joining us again. Like, comment, subscribe, share with all your friends. Um, this is episode forty, and we'll see you guys back here next week. Bye.